Hey guys, Stealth here. Today we're going to design a deck specifically for the Ones and Harbor map. Now, as you can see, the Ones and Harbor map is a general 1v1 map. It has a lot of urban areas. There's a ton of sectors, especially right here in the middle of the map, and these are usually very, very heavily fought over. Now, there's also some forests here. Again, infantry fighting terrain, not exactly locations for a tank. Same in Delta, a lot more urban areas, a lot more in Charlie. And over here to the right in Alpha, this is finally where you have some open stretches of land. This is where you could use an ATGM carrier, you could use a tank, you could use something that has long range, such as a gunned tank destroyer. So what we need for this deck is a lot of infantry, something that can support infantry, stuff that can actually support it by using, for example, a mortar, um, a dedicated IFV, a napalm launcher, stuff like that. We do not need a lot of open units, so for example a tank, if you drove a tank up here it'll easily get killed because it can get side shotted by any infantry units in these buildings. So what we need to do is plan ahead and think that we're going to be using maybe a couple of tanks just to support infantry pushes in the later stages of the game. Now it doesn't really matter what site you're coming from. If you're coming from Gulf, you're first going to have to conquer this area in the middle using infantry. And then you're going to push up using uh, infantry, IFVs and tanks over this open field. If you're coming from Bravo, you have Charlie, you have to conquer Echo and then you have these two bridges to cross which makes it a bit more easy to defend this final zone than this one in my opinion because bridges are of course bottlenecks and you can stuff infantry all over the place. But even here you could use some tanks to fire at the last zone. So you do need some vehicles which can do that. Now let's get to it. So what I need for this deck is a specific type of deck. I can go for a specialization. Um, let's go for a combination. Let's go for uh, the blue dragons in this case. So blue drags, uh, ones and harbor. In this case I'm going to designate a specialization for my deck. In this situation I would not recommend armored because an armored deck has a focus on tanks and tanks is not what we need in this deck. Support I would not recommend on a 1v1 because it doesn't offer as much flexibility as the other guys. Marines could work, mechanized could work, and airborne could work. The problem with airborne is that those towns could easily provide a lot of cover to a lot of AA units, a lot of AA infantry units. So what we need to do is not go with airborne. At least I wouldn't do it, because I don't generally play that way. So that leaves us with mechanized, marines, or motorized. Now I know that motorized doesn't give me the same amount of IFVs as a mechanized deck. I know that marines have some decent vehicles, but I know that the blue dragons come with some very nice mechanized units. So that's how I'm going to pick mechanized. I'm not going to pick an era deck, also known as a category deck. So we're just going to hit create. Now logistics should be pretty easy. In this case though, it might be interesting because it's such an urban map to bring command infantry. You can get four of these guys and there aren't that many zones. So let's first put these guys in and later see if we need to replace them. So I want one of these, then a group of command jeeps, which does give me a lot of command vehicles, but I think we'll need them. An FOB. Um, we could bring in a Chinook, but again it could get easily shot down. So instead, because the lines aren't that long, I'm going to go with cargo trucks. And this gives me the option of using the Chugata cargo or the M511 cargo and it's exactly the same truck. It just has a different texture. Now this thing seems to be a bit bigger but according to the game it doesn't matter. They're both medium size. So I'm just going to go with the Chugata. This gives me 17 times 500 liters of supplies. And I'm going to take two of these. Or actually let's see if we can manage with 17 because it's such a small deck or a small area. Next up, infantry. The first thing I'm going to add in this deck is a engineer card because the engineers can do very good work in all of those towns. Now building to building fighting, if you've seen my CQC guide, you know how effective these engineers can be. 
They come in a KM200 vehicle, which does offer some protection and it comes with a machine gun. The alternative is the KM113A1, which is pretty much the same vehicle, it just has a little bit less armor. So I want to go with this one. And because I do like my engineers, and because they're going to take a lot of fire, because they're constantly on the front line, I'm going to put these guys in at hardened. Next up, we need some infantry which can hold the line, so we're going to go with rifle infantry. Um, if you really wanted to, you could go with reserve infantry, which opens up um, the Yebi guns. But I think that these guys are not going to perform very well in towns, even though you can bring 38 of these guys into the battle. They will just die very, very easily because these rifles are absolutely worthless. So we're not going to go with those. Disable the Yebi guns. That leaves us with the Sochong Sus and. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, Japan, I'm not going to pronounce that. Let's compare these two, see which is better. Um, what I'm mostly looking for is a machine gun with a CQC tag, and unfortunately neither of those have that. So then I'm going to look at, okay, what else can they do well? Do they have any special kind of transport, maybe? Because the main weaponry they carry is pretty much the same. Except that the Carl Gustav is a bit of a better anti-tank weapon than the M72A4. Otherwise, the uh, assault rifle they're using, the K2 or the uh, HOA 89, are the same. Same specs. And this machine gun, uh, this one has a bit more range, although you're never going to need a kilometer in a town. Not in door-to-door -door fighting. These have a bit better accuracy. Rate of fire is um, 1 round a minute different. Suppression is the same, so it doesn't really matter. A mix of these two would be ideal, because then you'd have these guys, the Sochang Su's, coming in, uh, some of these great IFVs, and you'd have the uh, Japanese infantry with their Carl Gustav to take out anything else. So what I'm going to do is have a look at the different IFVs. We have the KAFV 40-50, this comes with um, a Browning 50 cal, so a machine gun, and a K4 grenade launcher, which is very nice in the town. The other option is the KAV-25. It's the same vehicle, but the gun is now an autocannon, which means that it can also take out vehicles. This would be a very nice addition, because it's something that my infantry can do, but these things can do just a bit faster at a longer range against other IAVs, and they can even take out helicopters. So in this case, because it's such an urban deck, I'm going to go with these guys, and I want them at a veteran, because they're going to be seeing a lot of fire. Now, first up, I'm going to visit all of the other categories, so that I have a well-rounded deck, and then I'm going to fill in whatever slots remain. So let's have a look at the anti-aircraft infantry. Over here you have Mistrals, Red Eyes, Stingers, PSAMs, which are, as far as I know, pretty much Stingers. And then you have Stingers again. Actually, I think that the PSAM is the upgraded version of the Stinger. Let's compare those. I don't use these guys very often. Yeah, these things have a bit more range. So that's the advantage over the Stinger. So what I want is um, a decent number of these so I can spread them across a town so that I can take down aircraft, both airplanes and helicopters, without having to worry about losing a couple of these units. Mistrals are very good, but they don't have a very high availability, only 7. Uh, I don't like red eyes because they're generally very, very inaccurate, but you do get a high number of them. Stingers seem to be sitting somewhere between with hardened uh, 10 or 7 veterans. PSAMs is a lower availability, and Stingers is again 10. Now these guys come with the Nanasan Shiki transport and these with the KM200, which is something that performs exactly the same role. Um, in this situation I'm gonna go with the Japanese. I want 10 of those stingers ready. Next up, ATGMs, anti-tank weapons. You won't need a lot of these. If you do need them, you're going to use them on the outskirts of the ones and Harbor map where the buildings have an outlook onto the field. Otherwise these things are not very useful. Use these things there 
um, if you use them in towns they're not going to be that effective because they're excelling at taking things out at range not at very short range again I do like a decent number but I won't need that many of them so I'm just gonna go with seven veterans so there we have uh, engineers line infantry anti-air infantry and anti-tank infantry now what else can we bring in we can bring in fire support units and these would do very very nicely in a town because they come with recoilless rifles they sit somewhere between infantry so standard line infantry with an 875 meter range and the two mats which come with a 2450 meter range so these guys are right in the middle now I can use either uh, the M67RR on the South Korean forces or those on the Japanese forces specs are exactly the same so again we're gonna have a look at the different transport this thing comes with a very decent transport which is basically a Bradley it just is a bit different they do have a very nice gun on them with three AP power so they can take out vehicles such as IFVs or APCs which are transporting enemy infantry and at very very close range they can even take out a tank with that gun at longer range they can take out um, a tank with their Ju, sorry, Ju mat launcher or their Ju mat missile which has 17 AP power and 45% accuracy so I expect one of these things to hit now because I can mix these in uh, these guys in very nicely with my line infantry I want a good number of them because that will also give me a good number of those vehicles it will make them a bit expensive 45 per unit but I think it's worth it because those vehicles can probably get more killing done than they're worth so that is going to uh, put me at an advantage and for that reason I want 14 of these now we need something that can really kick down the door and kick someone out of a town and for that I can use um, either the Japanese Kutais or I can use the South Korean UDT slash SEALs let's compare these two see what they can offer me let's compare them to the Kutai 90 which is a bit of a more fair comparison these guys both have the Carl Gustav M2 both 8 rounds they both have a CQC machine gun now let's compare these two um, when doing CQC I'm looking for high accuracy and high rate of fire because that means that a lot of bullets are going to land on target I don't need a high range because these guys are going to be used in towns mostly to really drive out other infantry using the uh, Gongbyung engineers as support so these guys will stun them with their napalm launchers and then the Kutai 90s or the UDT slash seals could come in and kick them out of the zone in this situation I think that the Kutai 90 is a bit better because it has more accuracy it has more rate of fire and um, you can miss this range it doesn't matter the HE power is the same the suppression though is a bit lower so keep that in mind you're going to take a lot a little more time to get those guys suppressed and that's because these things fire 5.56 millimeter rounds and these fire 7.62 millimeter rounds so these rounds are a bit bigger now the machine uh, sorry the assault rifle is pretty much the same 60% accuracy, 30% stabilizer, 1 HE power, 40 suppression, same rate of fire. So this doesn't matter. In this case, out of personal preference, I'm going to go with the Kutai 90s. Uh, you can have 7 of these. So do use them sparingly. Because if you lose them, they're gone. And um, you can lose 1 unit of these. It won't hurt you if you lose 1 or 2 units of these. It will hurt you because that's a third of your capacity of these Kutais again we're gonna fill up these slots later I first wanna round up my deck so supports if I'm doing a lot of town fighting I'll need something that can support my infantry and what better to support infantry than a mortar now you have a bit of different options as far as the mortars concerned you have of course the Japanese units or the South Koreans um, I do like something that has a bit of a dispersion so three kilometer dispersion is okay I do need something with high HE power because infantry that's entrenched in buildings does need quite a bit of HE power to get dislodged. So three AP power, sorry, three HE power is a bit on the low end for me. Now you have the uh, 107 MSP, which has four HE power, 
And this is more like what I'm looking for. Let's compare this one to uh, the KM106. And I think this is exactly the same vehicle. Just that this is the Japanese version, this is South Korean version. An alternative would be the KM242. And these things, let's see what the difference is between those. Rate of fire is the same. Suppression is the same. HE power the same. Same dispersion, same suppression, same amount of rounds. So the difference is the platform. What kind of vehicle is used to transport this mortar? And here you can see that this thing has two frontal armor where this thing has one. And uh, you get that for five points. Now, it's a small map, one Zen Harbor. I will not be using mortars at a six kilometer range, probably. Or, sorry, no, I will be using them at that range because that way my artillery can stay safe. And that means I won't need this frontal armor. So instead, I'm going to go with these units. I do want a bit of fire support. They don't have to be hardened because they're not going to need that accuracy. So I want to have seven of these. Now, if you wanted to, you could go with MLRS. These things are uh, multi-launch rocket systems, and these multi-launch rocket systems will stun a lot of infantry because they have a lot more HE power. Mortars have four. These things have seven. The problem is that they're not too accurate. You're going to be uh, bombing a larger area using these units, and they do want to take up quite a bit of supplies. So that is why I usually don't use them. And I'm also going to skip them in this deck. What I do want to have is a howitzer, and this is going to be my long range artillery support. So if I'm looking at something like an artillery unit on the other side of the map, if I'm seeing some um, AA gun that's sitting still, or I just want to snipe that command vehicle, I need something that can perform that task. So it has to be accurate, it has to be um, decent to high HE power, so 7 to 10 would be best. And Rate of fire might not be that important because I will use these things mostly on things that are sitting still. So the 105 SP is definitely not my option because it has a very, very high dispersion. The shell is going to land anywhere in a 7 kilometer radius. That's not very good. This thing is worse, 9.1 kilometer dispersion. And this thing is a sniper. I do like these things, the 203 SPs. You do need an FOB to keep them supplied because they only carry two rounds off their own. Uh, they have a very low dispersion, a very high HE power, a very low rate of fire because it takes forever and then some to load these rounds. But you can actually snipe something with this, so these might be an option. Uh, the KM110, again, uh, it's pretty much the same vehicle. The difference is a little bit less range. Now range is not that important on this map because with even with 16 kilometers I think you could hit the other side of the map. So these things could probably get the job done. Another option is the KM107 which has again bad dispersion or the K55 which does not have very good dispersion again. So in this case I'm gonna go with uh, let's say four no, actually two is enough. Two trained 2103 SPs. Sorry, 203, not 2103. 203 SPs. Next up, air defense. These things are not going to be used in their normal role because my infantry with their AA can do quite a lot of their work. So these things will be used on the outskirts where there are forests, where you can get them in cover. Try not to get these units into towns because they'll just die there. They're easy pickings, very low armor, and their only goal is actually to support tanks which are out in the open. So, because there isn't a lot of that, you can go for some more expensive units, because you won't be spamming as many of them, probably. So that means I can go for, uh, say, the K263, I can go for the K30B ho, or I can go for the gun tank. Now, I do like the gun tank or the B ho, so let's see what the difference is. This thing has a different weapon on it. This thing has the twin KCB and this thing has the twin KDA. I don't know what the difference is yet, so let's have a look at that. They're both radar guided. They're both area of effect, so they're going to splash a little bit. The range is the same. The accuracy is the same, except for the stabilized accuracy. Now that's interesting. 
because a stabilizer is always more interesting than a non-stabilized vehicle. So this thing can fire on the move and that's especially handy when it's pushing whereas this thing cannot do that. So uh, in this situation I'm tempted to take the gun tank. The only thing I need to look out for is the availability. See if there's a difference there. This thing has 7 and 5 and this thing also has 7 and 5. In this situation I'm going to go with the gun tank simply because it has a better stabilizer and I think 5 of these should be enough. Finally, we need some long-range AA to defend ourselves against airplanes. So, in this case, we got the options of the Kairiu Hawk, sorry, the Kairiu Hawk, or the Pip uh, 2 or the standard I Hawk. Now, the more range, the better on these platforms. So, let's see. Uh, the Pip 2 has a four and a half, sorry, 4.2 kilometer range. So does this thing. The difference between these is 5% accuracy, which is nothing. It's not important. This platform is a bit more uh, speedy off-road, 10 kilometers, but in this map there are so many roads that I probably won't be using them off-road anyway. So this doesn't really factor in my decision which unit to take. What does factor in is the availability, 7 and 5, or 5 and 4. Now I'm going to go with these things because they have more availability so I can spread them out in groups of two across the map and have a very very good anti-airplane defense. Next up, tanks. Like I said before we won't use a lot of these but when we will use them I want them to be hitting hard. So I want a lot of armor and I want a good gun on them. The K1 is your go-to tank for the South Koreans. I do love these tanks because they're a very, very good tank for only 85 points. 17 frontal armor makes them very survivable. 60% accuracy with a 15 AP power gun. Now this should have been a bit higher, in my opinion. That would have made it an even better tank. But this thing is alright. So what we can do with this is uh, engage other vehicles, engage other tanks. And using that we can kill them and push up towards the enemy base. So I want this thing just to be the mainstay of my tank force. I'm going to go with 8 hardens. I also very much like the Nana Yon Shiki G, which is a Japanese prototype tank. This thing comes with a grenade launcher. I don't have a grenade launcher unit in my deck yet, so these things would be very very handy to suppress blocks of t uh, urban areas to make sure that my infantry can take that block or that this tank can just suppress the infantry so that it doesn't fire on other units. 60 point vehicles, um, 8 armor, 15 AP power gun, decent range, decent accuracy, or actually very good accuracy. I highly recommend these tanks because they're just very good all round infantry killers. They're not so very good against tanks, so try to keep them in their main element and try to keep them where they perform best. Let's go with 10 of these. By the way, if you are a World of Tanks player, um, the Nana Yon Shiki A is in World of Tanks the STB-1. This is exactly the same vehicle. Now let's see, we can bring in some more tanks, but I doubt we'll be needing them. Because normally, if you can push up with a lot of IFVs, with a lot of infantry, and with some vehicles to support, you will barely need any tanks. So I'm not going to add any more in at this stage. Next up is Recon, and this is going to be important because it's going to be our eyes and ears in the battlefield. And with all the um, side roads we have, we do need some wheeled vehicles. And for the rest we're going to use infantry, because infantry can hide in blocks of towns. They can be hidden in uh, on the edge of forests, and they can be used as scouts. So, what kind of infantry to use? You have the Rangers, or the Suzeg Day. The difference between these is that the Rangers come in uh, or the KFV, the KV-107, or the Chugata. There's no different, or there are no other options. These guys have a bit more options. Um, they can be brought in in a truck, in APCs, or in helicopters, such as the UH-60, which is the Black Hawk. Now that's very nice because this is a very speedy helicopter. Sorry, it goes 300 kph. And I do want to be able to transport my recon very, very quickly because these guys can also do some behind the lines operations if I combine them 
with my other infantry, such as the Kutai 90s. So, in this case, I do want to have at least one card of these, and seven should do. I could also bring in some rangers. These guys um, are also very good. Very good stealth, very uh, small, of course, because they're infantry and very good optics. But I think that seven infantry units will do for now. Vehicles. You don't have that many options, especially since we picked the mechanized specialization. You got the Hachi Nanashiki, which is an IFV or a recon unit, which comes with an autocannon. We have the KM900, which is just a standard, uh, pretty cheap recon unit. Just comes with a browning. Don't use it against anything other than infantry because it'll easily die. You got the Fiat 6616 which comes with an autocannon and a grenade launcher. So again, a grenade launcher, that's a very nice addition for this vehicle. Or we could take the KAV 90s. Now, in this case, I would like to use a combination of the KAV 90 because it has a very good gun. This thing has 13 AP power for a 35 point platform, which comes with good optics and two frontal armor. If I have the option of taking these, I will generally nine times out of 10 take them because they're just that good. I also want to have the Fiat's in there because they come with a grenade launcher and I want a bit more availability there so I'm going with 7. Finally we're going to need a recon helicopter and we can pick from the 086 or the 086D. The difference between these is that the 086D is armed. It comes with fin folding aerial rockets. Um, not very useful because they barely have any accuracy. They don't do any HE power, just two. The only thing you could kill with this is a command vehicle. The problem is they only have good optics, and I do want to have something which has very good optics, so I'm going to go with the OH-6. Next up, vehicles. Vehicles are something that has to be supporting infantry in the town, or do something useful outside the town. That's the only reason I'm going to go with vehicles. So the first pick is going to be the KM-132, because this is a napalm transport. And by napalm transport, I mean that it brings napalm to the front line. This thing can easily eradicate entire blocks of infantry or entire town blocks using its napalm launcher. So for that, I'm going to use 14 of these. They don't have any armor, um, so you will lose a couple of them, but they can probably, before they die, do more than 20 points, which is their price. Now, in open areas or along roads where you have a bit more line of sight, you could use an ATGM platform. Let's specialize to those, a tank destroyer. We have the TOW-2, which is a very good, a very high AP power anti-tank platform. You got the ITO, decent accuracy, lower AP power. Uh, the M36, which is a special vehicle because it's a very, very old gun tank destroyer. And then you have the Chu mats, which is the Japanese anti-tank weapon. Now, in this case, I'm going to go with the Ito because it gives me a nice balance between an amount of missiles, 8, good range, good accuracy, and a medium AP power. I don't need 25. 20 is generally enough. I don't think I'm going to need 14 of these. I'm going to go with 10 veterans. Next up is a fire support unit, and this is something that you can use to support your infantry from a distance, so preferably from outside the town, because all of these have zero or one armor, which means that they're very, very soft targets. Now the options we have here is um, this recoilless rifle carrier. Could be used in ambushes for 15 points, they're pretty cheap. You could go with the Mitsubishi, again recoilless rifle carrier. The Ranzu. Um, is a dual recoilless rifle carrier. And finally we have the Xiong Gong Po, which is a very, very old 1965 gun truck. It just carries four machine guns in a setup. That's all. Right now there are not exactly very interesting options, but the Ranzo could be interesting because it comes with recoilless rifles, which could kill infantry and vehicles in the open. Don't use them too much or don't rely too much on them against tanks because um, they lack 500 meters against tanks. The maximum range of a tank is 2275. This thing only has 1750, so it's going to get easily taken out by a tank if the tank spots it. Also, low autonomy, 
low amount of rounds and that makes me finally decide not to take these units because these things are something you have to babysit and I don't like babysitting my units. I like to be able to send my units to the front line, have them do their job, have them kill some stuff and not be uh, needing a babysitter to keep them resupplied, keep them refueled, etc. This thing is something of a better alternative because it comes with 20 rounds and a bit more autonomy. So I'm going to throw 19 of these in my deck. Next up, helicopters. Not that many options, but we won't need that many. What I do want to have is a dedicated anti-tank killer. So something that can kill tanks, and for that I am going to look for something that has high AP power. This thing has 20. This one has 15, so both of these are not exactly qualified to do the job I want them to do. This thing again has 20, and this thing has 20. This thing does not even have 80 GMs. So what I'm going to have to do is pick one of these. Um, this thing comes with four 60% uh, anti-GMs. This thing comes with eight. Now again, you pay almost double for it, but you get twice as many ATGMs, and you get a Vulcan, and you get Hydras. So that makes me go for the AH-1S. And I want to have two cards of these. By the way, these choppers are exactly the same. It's just that this is the South Korean one and this is the Japanese one. Otherwise, they're exactly the same helicopter. The AH-1J is something that can provide um, support for infantry using only rocket pods. I don't generally use these because they're not that good against anything else than infantry. You could kill a light vehicle with it, but not much else. So that's why I don't use them. Next, going into the air category. And in this case, I would like to have something that can fight aerial units, such as the KF-16C. These are very good air superiority fighters, low turn radius, exceptional air detection, good speed, and six AMRAAM fire and forget missiles. Take two of these and you're all set for anti-air units. Next up, we got anti-tanks, something that can snipe a tank for me. And according to the selector, this is the only vehicle or the only airplane that can do that for me, and this is the F4E Peace Pheasant 2. It comes with four Mavericks, Fire and Forget, 26 AP power, so this can snipe high point tanks. So I do want to have two of those. Next up, I want to have something that can bomb stuff. And these have to be either smaller bombs, such as uh, 227 kilogram bombs against infantry, or F-86F uh, with napalm. So both this one and the pheasant are very interesting. Because the pheasant can go after vehicles using um, <coughs> its bombs, where the Kyoko cannot exactly do that because napalm doesn't have any HE power. It's just going to hope that it burns up a vehicle. But if you're using stuff in towns, I would always recommend to have a napalm platform, a napalm bomber. So that makes me select the Kyoko. If these things die, it's no big deal generally, because they're only 60 points and you get 5 of them in your deck. Finally, we have the multi-roll or the seed. Now, um, there aren't exactly a high, no, there isn't exactly a high number of multi-roll aircraft available for this deck. You've got the Dragonfly, which is a very interesting craft because it comes with both a cluster bomb and a snake eye bomb, so a low, uh, low kilogram anti-infantry slash anti-vehicle bomb and this thing can kill vehicles uh, and engage light tanks from the top. The F1 is a precision bomber as you can see it fires two of these laser guided HE bombs 12 HE power, zero dispersion. These things are extremely accurate but I found that they die pretty easily because they only have 10% ECM. Last up is uh, the F4 EG Kai and this thing carries eight bombs. It will d drop those in a sort of cluster, sorry, um, a sort of carpet bomb-like pattern. So you're going to have a strip of bombs. And this is in useful for destroying vehicles and destroying infantry. And they can also go after aircraft. So these are a general all-rounder, but they do cost 130 points. Um, 
In this case, I'm going to go with the F1s because they are better at sniping stuff than the others. And for a bit more survivability, actually, this is not going to offer that much more survivability. I'm just going to go with four rookies. You could go with a seed plane if you wanted to, but I don't find it that useful on maps such as these. And apart from that, the only unit that the uh, Blue Dragons get is the KF-16C Block 52D, which is an anti-air fighter slash seed plane. It can do both, and it can do both very, very well. It carries the Harm anti-radiation uh, anti missile, 5.2 kilometer range, but they're very expensive and you only get one per card, which in this situation is not worth it for me. Now let's also have a look at the Naval tab. This is something I usually don't cover, but in this case, in the ones and harbor, I do want to have a naval section, because of course you can use your naval section um, if you're using the naval version of the ones and harbor map. Now the question is, what kind of naval units do you want to bring in? And it really depends on what kind of naval force you want to be. Do you want to be um, something that attacks from the coast? and then swoops inland? Or do you want to be a sort of initial landing force which captures um, either of the landing zones, which is also a reinforcement zone, and then brings in more units from there? In my case, I want to be able to do a bit of both, but I don't have enough activation slots for that, so I'm going to have to be picky. Now the first thing I want to have is a ship, which is um, a coastal support. And the options we have there are the monitors, either the monitor Zippo, which could be interesting, it has napalm, so it could go up the river, and from there put napalm on any of those buildings which are near the shores. So in this case, the Zippo could be an interesting unit. You also have the standard Zippo, which is basically a floating artillery platform. Look at that, 16 kilometer range, with two autocannons mounted on it. Or you can use these things, which are river boats. Uh, both, all three of these are, by the way. But these things carry Hellfires, Brownings, and grenade launchers. They are just not as durable as these ships, so keep that in mind. But what I want to do is not use any of these. Um, I want to have, let's see, an escort. I think should be good enough. My goal or role for this ship is to support my units near the coast or use them in a landing. Actually, let's also open up the command ship tab. There. I want to have something that has a high range on its main gun, so it can shoot inland and destroy tanks and vehicles and infantry. I do want to have something that has AA, and I do want to have something that can defend itself against anti-ship missiles. So something that has bad or non seawis such as the Fremantle, is not an option. The Hatsuyuki has a 3 kilometer range, which does make it okay for uh, anti-coast operations, but it's not great. The Hatsuyuki is more of a frigate slash light destroyer, which you would use against ships, because it has 8 harpoons. Now normally in the maps such as Ones in Harbor, you will not use most of these. It does come, however, with a very nice Sea Sparrow anti-air missile. Good range against helicopters, excellent range against airplanes, but the rest of the aspects of the ship don't appeal to me. Now the Congo could be used here, because um, it has a very very good gun, 6 kilometer range, and that is very nice to support inland operations. So you could use this thing, park it off the coast, um, first suppress the coast, then land on it, and then get the Congo closer to the shore so it can fire further inland. That's going to be one roll. And it also has a very, very high range against helicopters. It also comes with eight harpoons, and it can use these things to go after ships. So if the enemy does call in ships, these things would be useful. Problem is, they're very expensive at a 420 points. The unit I am going to pick is the Lafayette, and I'm going to pick this one because it does everything that the Congo does, but it does it cheaper, provided it doesn't do it as well, but it does do its same job. Medium Seawiz versus very good Seawiz, but I hope 
I don't run into any ships. <clears throat> the gun is very, very nice. 4,700 meter range, sorry, 4,700 meter range, 40% accuracy, good HE power, 6 versus 8. Um, a decent Exocet anti-ship missile, which is on all fronts better than the Harpoon. But it doesn't... Actually, no, it, yeah, it is on all fronts better. Just the way it is, except the range. And it carries the Crotal CN2, which is a very nice naval SAM. Extreme accuracy, 80%, which makes it, I believe, the highest anti or the highest accuracy on anti-air missiles in the game. And these things are also used as defensive anti-missile defense units. So you can use these things to shoot down missiles that are aimed at the Lafayette. The reason I'm picking the Lafayette is because it's only 200 points. This thing is 420, so I can have two Lafayettes bombing that coast, killing those aircraft for the price of one Congo. So let's bring in a couple of Lafayettes. Three, two, or one. I think two at Hardened should do the job. But I'm hoping that there aren't that many threats and that these things can level up on their own. So I'm going to use Rookie because it gives me more of these Crotals. Next up, I want to have something I can push into the zone, push into the landing zone, which is going to have to be infantry. So I can use commandos, I can use light infantry or rifle infantry. Habiums are very, very good infantry units. And if you have a naval zone, you can even use these guys to defend or attack in your towns. Because they carry a very nice machine gun, which has the CQC tag, so it can be used in the same house-to-house -house fights. It carries the PZF-3, an excellent anti-tank weapon, 22 AP power, 70% accuracy, so any tank that comes close to it will die. And it carries a nice assault rifle. Bit of a strange number for the stabilizer, but okay. I'm going to go with 12 of these. These will come in their LVTP-7A1s, which have quite a bit of armor. Unfortunately, they don't have the grenade launcher, because that's only on the American unit. But still, these things can be used in a very effective role to provide fire support, to capture initial buildings, and from there on, make sure that there's a beachhead so that other units can land. Next up, I want to have some anti-air. Mostly infantry, because this is such an urban zone that any infantry or any AA might as well be infantry. And I'm again going to go with stingers because they're pretty uh, reliable. Keep in mind you also have the Crotal right off your shore if you're playing that right with your with this deck. So you already have a 3500 meter AA unit. So this thing doesn't have to have very high range. <clears throat> it just has to have a lot of availability. So I'm going to go with 8 of trained. Next up, standoff anti-tank capability. The only option we have is two mats coming in Humvees. Humvees are of course very, very soft targets. So make sure that you offload these things as soon as possible and get those two mats into the buildings. 60% accuracy is already very good. So eight should do the job. So I have something that can support my forces. I can have units that can land on the shores and the only thing that is left for me now is to get a command unit. I can get a tracked command, such as a command tank, or I can get a wheeled com <coughs> Sorry, my voice is getting out a bit. I can get a wheeled command, um, such as a command Humvee, a command Jeep, or a command Mitsubishi. And then, of course, there's the Nana Nishiki. Of the, the Hachi Nishiki. Um, <clears throat> because a landing zone is usually very heavily contested, I'm going to use a command tank, because this thing can take some punishment and dish it out if it really has to. I'm going to go with three of those. So, to give you an overview of the deck, I do have eight points available, <clears throat> and I do have quite a bit of room in my deck for improvements. So what I want is a bit more units to fight in those towns. I want to have more capability of doing that. So we're going to go into the Commando tab, because now we can have some fun. we got all the mandatory units, and now we can just have some fun with the rest of them. So we could get some more Kutai 90s in. We could get some UDT SEALs in. Uh, we could find some Shock Troopers. Unfortunately, neither of these groups have those. They don't have any light infantry either. 
fire supports we already have, engineers we already have, so I'm just going to go with commandos. Another tab of uh, these Kutai 90s, because these are very, very good in towns. Unfortunately, I still don't have anything high AP power in towns, and this is something where this deck is really lacking. And the problem is I cannot get it either, because these things only carry 13 AP power. Um, let's see, my riflemen. Doesn't matter which riflemen you take, they all have low AP power. So, I haven't used these things yet, I believe, the Hachi Q Shiki. And I do want to have a couple of those. Actually, yeah, I do have them, but they come with the hands. And these things are also a very nice infantry unit. So, I have two cards of uh, Hachi Q Shikis. A very nice IFV. And these things come with a decent AP power gun. So this way I have quite the variety of infantry units, quite the toolbox. And that's how I consider my deck always. Consider it a toolbox. Which tool can you use in which situation? The more variety, the better. Next, let's revisit the vehicle tab. Because over here we have some interesting vehicles. And the vehicles which I haven't used are the M18 or the M36. And you can use these things in forests because they have a very good off-road speed. And these can come up very close to enemy tanks or enemy vehicles hiding out in forests and kill them with 6 AP power. Up close, that is lethal. So I want to have 19 of those. Now, let's see. In the tank category, we could go with some more tanks, but I don't think I'll be needing those. In the support category, we could go with some more AA, but we have quite a bit of AA. We have the gun tanks, we have the carry use, and we have the stingers. So in the support tab, you could now pick um, a fun unit. You could pick, and with a fun unit, I mean something that you enjoy using. I could go with the rocket launcher, or I could go with something uh, like a cheaper AA gun, which could engage infantry at a one kilometer range, or engage helicopters, spread these out across the map. But I have enough AA, so I'm not gonna go with any of these. First things first, I'm going to go with more commands, or at least more logistics. And in this situation, I want to have a bit more of these transports, and especially for operations which are happening a bit further away. And if you play it well with this deck, with this infantry deck, you're going to be pushing up into that town. And at some point, the distance between your FOB and the front line is going to be too big. And that's when these KV-107s can be very, very handy. They can transport supplies to the edge of the town, and from there you can take them further in with the Chugata cargos. So when I have 10 of these in, leaves me with just 2 points. That means I could spend it on one more infantry unit, but I already have 83 units there, which should be more than enough. I can spend it on helicopters, vehicles, or tanks, and completely fill out my activation points. In this case, let's see, um, I don't need any more tanks because I already have the vehicles and the types I need. I don't need any more vehicles, so I'm just going to put it in helicopters. Now, these things are decent. They can go around flanks pretty quickly, uh, but they don't carry that many eye toes, either of them. This one carries toes, which is even worse. So instead, I'm going to go with a couple more helicopters, because these things can be used very effectively in urban operations, to support your infantry or go around flank with a couple of these and a recon chopper. So there you have it. This is my Wands and Harbor map deck. You could of course use this thing, this deck on other maps which have urban areas, but this thing is specifically aimed at Wands and Harbor. I haven't played it yet because as you've seen I've just created it, but I do want to test it out soon. So I'm probably going to go up against a 1v1 in a multiplayer or do a skirmish to just see how well these units perform. And of course I'll be sharing my results with you. So if you have any units which I missed, please leave a comment below. If you liked the video, if you liked watching it, and if, you, if it taught you something about how I create my decks and how you could use the same principle to create decks which are very, very specialized, then please consider giving it a like. And if you want to see more of my videos, just hit that subscribe button and I'll keep sending you videos. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and see you next video.